So in this video, we're going to talk about magnification of an optical system. And I'm going to derive a general form of magnification, as well as a more specific one that's generally more useful. First of all, what is magnification? Well, um, say I've got some object, which we usually draw as an arrow because <laughs> we're engineers. <laughs> we like simple stuff. And this propagates through some optical system. So it might be a lens, might be something else. And then say this is the optical axis and then an image is formed and that image might be upright it might be on the right hand side of the lens it might be on the left it could really be anywhere um, and in general it's got a different height than we started out with so if this is h o height of our object and h i height of our image these two are different and magnification is a really useful opti useful property of optical systems because if i'm trying to look at something tiny like say a cell um, I want to be able to blow it up so that my eye can see it. So I want it to look something like this. And uh, I might not care whether the cell is flipped upside down, for example, but I do very much care about its actual size. So the size that the image is formed because I'm a human, you know, my eyes can only see, uh, see things that are so small. And I want to be able to see uh, what's inside this cell. And so how do we find the magnification? Well. Um, there's a couple ways to do it, but the most general way is using ray transfer matrices. So in the last video, we used a ray transfer matrix for uh, the bottom of this object. So for the point source emanating from the bottom of the object. And we say, well, this has to map to the bottom of the image. And so we, uh, we use that to figure out what is the condition for forming our image. But now we want to figure out what happens to the top of the object and we because we know that's going to map to the top or the um, the outermost point let's say uh, of the image so what is this uh, we what does this vector um, representing any of the rays that come out from the top of this object or in other words the spherical waves coming out from the top of the object what is how can we write that well, those rays are just at a distance, um, h naught above the optical axis. So the x coordinate is h naught, and then the angle. Well, the angle could be anything, right? Because this is a point source, so we could have a theta n like this. We could have a theta n like this. Could be positive, could be negative. So we're just going to write that as theta n because we don't know anything about it. Uh, and when we apply the ray transfer matrix, let's call it T, um, to this vector, we should get the tip of the object. So any of these rays, um, they should all converge to the tip of the object. So that should give us hi uh, and some theta out. So these rays might be converging from this angle, from this angle, from this angle. We don't really know. Uh, we're, we're somewhat ignorant about that. So we'll just call it theta out. But we do know that because we're forming an image, this spherical wave from the top of this image has to converge has to become a converging spherical wave and converge to this point on the object or on the on the image these spherical waves from the object converge to spherical waves that converge to a point on the image and so if we write out the matrix equation so instead of leaving it as a matrix uh, because I, I prefer to do this I think it, I think it makes it more reasonable uh, we know that the height of the image is just going to be t11 times the height of the object and this just comes from t11 times x in plus t12 theta in uh, plus t12 1 uh, theta in. And we know that theta out is just going to be t21 times h of the object uh, plus t22 times theta in. But we know previously that if we're forming an image, t12 has to be equal to 0. So this term actually drops off. And we'll get uh, t11 times h of the object is equal to h of the image. Or if we rewrite this, the ratio of h of the image to h of the object, so the height of the image to the height of the object, is just t11. And so this is the magnification. And this is the most general form of the magnification. So the 1, 1 component of the transfer matrix. So if we have a transfer matrix which looks like this, uh, which is the form that all matrices take, all two by two matrices. This term T11 
represents our magnification. So now all we need to do is solve for the transfer matrix. And uh, the single fin lens system is arguably the most useful one. So let's figure out what the magnification of that will be. So this simple system, uh, we just propagate a distance SO. It's getting a little messy. We go through this lens and then we propagate another distance to the image SI. And so the overall transfer matrix T we just write as propagation by SI acting on the lens transfer matrix with some focal length uh, times propagation of, or propagation by the distance of the object. And we this inverse order just comes because first we're propagating by a distance SO, then we're going through a lens, and then we're going through um, another distance SI. And so we actually solved for this matrix in a previous video, and I'm just going to rewrite the results here. So we said the matrix uh, looked like this. It's got 1 minus SI over F in this corner, and then we said it had uh, 1 over SO plus 1 over SI minus 1 over F, and that's just a rearranging in, in this corner. And then what was this component? This was minus 1 over F, this was 1 minus SO over F. And so we're interested in this term, T11, because this is going to give us our magnification. So here we see that the magnification is just equal to 1 minus SI over F. And this is true, uh, but it's also a little ugly. So we, we, would like to, um, we would like to make this a little prettier. Well, to do that, we know that T12 is going to be equal to 0. Uh, which means that 1 over F is just equal to 1 over SO plus 1 over SI. And so if we substitute that in here, and that was just from rearranging this uh, T12 component, if we substitute that in here, we'll get 1 minus SI, and 1 over F just becomes 1 over SO plus 1 over SI. And so this is just 1 minus SI over SO minus SI. SI over SI, which is just equal to 1. So these 1s cancel. And we get that the magnification for a thin lens system is just minus SI over SO. So that's, that's really elegant. And so this is really interesting. This means that if we have an object on one side of the lens, and we know that the image is formed on the other side of the lens, so in other words, SI is positive and SO is positive, then that image is going to be inverted because the magnification is negative. It also means if we want a really high magnification from just a single thin lens, we see that we're going to have to be really, really far away. So we're going to have to, this SI is going to have to be huge for a given SO. So this is going to be true of a thin lens system in air or a thin lens system in any constant media refractive index. Um, but the more general form, uh, remember, for, of the magnification is this T11 term. So if we have the transfer matrix, then looking at T11 just gives us the magnification. T11 is just equal to the magnification. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Uh, if you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.